Today we're going to do the preparation of alum with Jared. So first he has weighed out some aluminum and that mass is 0 0.888 grams. So now he is cutting it into several small pieces, putting them into a clean 250 milliliter beaker. He has already added 25 milliliters of water and 25 milliliters of a three molar KOH solution. So now he is going to stir the mixture once he has all his pieces cut up. Is that it? Oh, sorry, go ahead. This is just a, uh, this is a Pepsi can. Yeah, so he's just cutting up bits of a Pepsi can that he weighed out to be 0.8 grams. And so he's going to warm it okay. on this hot plate. And the aluminum is going to dissolve and give off hydrogen gas, which is why we have our sash down, because we don't want to be breathing that in. And in about 10 minutes, all the aluminum should dissolve. Ooh. So we're just gonna heat this for about 10 minutes or so. You can see the gas coming out. What did you want to show first? It's okay. Now that our aluminum has dissolved, you can see there's some stuff floating but it's just the label of the can so we have put it into an ice bath to cool down now that we've removed the beaker from the ice we're Jared is going to add 20 milliliters of nine molar sulfuric acid very carefully and slowly Now we're just heating a little bit to try and um, dissolve some of the gel-like hydroxide that has formed and trying to get our solution as clear as possible. I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. Now we have set up a funnel in an iron ring with some glass wool inside to filter our mixture. And we're going to do that into a 150 milliliter beaker. Oh yeah, that's definitely clear. Wow, 
will then cool this mixture in an ice bath. And occasionally we will stir the solution and we will keep this in the ice bath until the temperature is dropped below 5 degrees Celsius. So while we're waiting for our alum to crystallize, we're going to go ahead and do um, part C. So we've obtained two pieces of wool and first we're going to soak one piece of wool in a alizarin bath for two minutes and this is our non-treated bath so this is just going to be the alizarin dye in our warm bath then for our other piece of wool we're going to immerse it in an alum bath for two minutes as well So now that our piece of wool in the not treated bath has been soaking for a minute or so, we're going to remove it from the bath and rinse it with some water <laughs> and blot it with a paper towel. and we will leave it here to dry. All right, now we have the piece of wool in the alum bath that has been sitting for a couple minutes. So we will remove that, rinse it with water, and then we will immerse it for two minutes in the hot solution. So now we will immerse it in a hot alizarin dye bath for two minutes. So this is our treated bath. Now that we have some crystals in our beaker, you can see, we're going to filter them off using vacuum filtration. Ooh. And we're going to rinse the beaker with some more DI water to try and get all the crystals that we can. Now we can rinse our crystals with acetone because we want to remove as much water as possible. That's acetone. So while we wait for our crystals to further dry, we're going to pull the wool out of the treated bath, rinse them with water, and dry them on a paper towel.
Here on the left, we have our not treated piece of wool. And on the right, we have our treated piece of wool. So we've weighed a dry watch glass, and that max is 33.997 grams. So now we're going to take our dry alum from the vacuum setup and use a spoon to scoop it onto the watch glass. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to weigh up the alum that we collected with the watch box. That mass is 45.968 grams. I'll cut it. So from those masses, you can determine the mass of your product. And then from there, you can go on to determine the percent yield of this reaction.